Loading. Hey. Let's get it. <clears throat> mic check, mic check, mic check. Should I get closer or is that good? All right. We coming, YouTube. YouTube, we coming. Mic check. Five, four, three. Woo. We are in the building, baby. What is going on, everybody? Got my brother with me. Listen, we just hit 1K. The network just hit a thousand subscriber. So if you are tapping in, you gotta tap all the way in and subscribe right now. We need it, we love it, and we love you. And we are here today with none other than my brother. Flip and grind. Enough with the antics, though, and the music. But uh, Daniel, what's going on, my brother? Welcome to the show. We just hit a thousand subscribers. Um, you can hear everything through here. Yeah, so we're live right now on YouTube. So we just hit a thousand subscribers. So I got my brother with me. I was a little distracted, y'all, but we are in the building. I got flipping grind with me. What's I got up? my What's brother up? from another mother. Um, I married your sister. <laughs> so you're literally my brother. But listen, we are in the building. You're in the new studio. And you know, you have a lot to talk about. We have a lot, lot to talk about because the last time you were on the show. You know, it's like so much has transpired, bro. So tap in for the audience. Tell the audience who you are if they don't know, and and introduce yourself, Dan. Hey, how's it going, everyone? Uh, Flip and grind here, or that's my TikTok tag name. Uh, you know, I um, got into real estate a little over a year ago. I started real estate wholesaling. Uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, you know, you're pretty much, you know, you're finding off market properties. And you're trying to get them at a discounted price, you know, and then and, and, uh, sell them to an investor or a cash buyer for a fee. So you're like the middleman as a wholesaler, you know. So, um, But things have changed, you know. Yeah, because you ain't wholesaling no more. <laughs> I mean, you're still wholesaling, but you've used that as a tool and a vehicle, right? Right. right. So what's going on now, Dan? Where are you at and what's going on, man? So um, I, I jumped into more of the investor side of things lately you know i'm looking for investment properties fix and flips buying holds or rental properties right um you know wholesaling was just a foot in the door you know we talked about this off camera a little bit so it was a foot in the door to get into real estate um learn everything i can and uh speak into the mic a little more and, oh, yep. and uh yeah. you know and just just like I said, it's all about it's starting, right? We all start from somewhere, get that foot in the door, learn about real estate. And the ultimate goal was to eventually get into the investing aspect, right? To get into the fix and flips, get into the buy and holds, uh, the rental properties and, you know, and all that jazz. <laughs> Sheesh. Damn, bro. And, um... Yeah, I'm a little distracted. I'm just testing everything out because we are live. I want to make sure the audience is hearing us all right. So, you know, if you're tapping in, you know, comment. Comment where you're tapping in from, you know, how you got to the network and share this with somebody because we're networking in real time. And this is like real life entrepreneurship unfolding, right? Um, my new role with the marketing director as well. It's like, man, we have so much to talk about, but like we were talking about before we started, right? It, it all begins with the mindset, right? right? And I know, you know, you had a couple things on the agenda you wanted to talk about, 
but please talk to me because you're full time in the army. And, and I, I think where you're at is like, you know, you are using all of your spare time to build a business. And I think that's something that the audience has to understand because everybody counts their self out, Dan, before they even give themselves a shot. You right. know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> yeah. So it's so doable. Um, to build a business or start a business, it you know while working a full time job, you know what I mean. It's so entrepreneurship is um, you know when someone when someone talks about or thinks about being an entrepreneur or starting their own business or or becoming their own boss, you know you you kind of you take it to the fundamentals of of like, and this is for a lot of your viewers out there, people who are trying to be an entrepreneur or trying to start their own business. Um, where do you begin? Like, where do you start? You know, like how, how does one even come up with the idea of like, Hey, you know what? One day I think I want to start my own business. Right. And I think a lot of that has to do with, uh, at least in my case, you know, real estate, real estate was the, the, the driving force of my entrepreneurship. The vehicle. Sense. Yeah. The vehicle. So, yeah, it does. It makes a lot of sense because it was the same for me because, you know, a lot of, you know, like I didn't like sell out of like entrepreneurship for my new position. Right. Like I use real estate to invest in my media company and then it came down to, to, to time. Right. Like what do right. I want to spend the majority of my time doing? Right. And it was the media over the real estate. But Real estate was still the vehicle and it's still the industry that I'm in and it's still the business that I, I'm building because, you know, your sister's getting her real estate license. Right. Um, you know, I just, we had a coaching session with an agent. She she was talking about, you know, leads, right? Like, it, it's funny how leads can be a problem for some people, but it's just because they need to get started to get their first one. So it's like, I'm excited about building a team. I know you've been building a team as well. So I want to ask you about your team. Tap in and tell us where you're at in the real estate business. So um, going back, and not to be the dead, dead horse here, uh, I started out wholesaling. And now just to dive a little bit deeper into uh, the investment portion of real estate, um, you know, and going back to the whole building, starting a team and, and – uh, I think the most important thing to look at is once you have that idea, um, and this is for anyone, regardless of what type of entrepreneurship they're trying to get into. It can be digital marketing, real estate, uh, whatever, right? Uh, I think building the foundation is the most important aspect and the most important critical. And with building the foundation, I think so many people are just so quickly, like, so they just want to dive into it so quickly that they, you know, skip some steps and the foundation is the most important. What I mean by that is to surrounding yourself with people, like-minded people who are, uh, you know, going through the same struggles or, or the same, you know, almost like a mastermind, so to speak, right. kind of like, right. Like, you know, being around like-minded people, having those conversations, making those connections, having those ideas that like, you know, and, and it's true that one quote, right? If you tell some people your goals, they'll take it as bragging right. or, or something, right? It's like you can't tell everything, everybody. So, no, I know exactly what you're talking about, bro, because, you know, guess where you're at right now? Yeah, you well, are on the network, baby. We <laughs> networking. Um, but, yeah, no, you're, you're right. That, fu that foundation, that mastermind group, if you would, um, how do you build that? You know, what? Like, it, like I said, it's... It's one thing to say, okay, I want to start my own business. I want to become an entrepreneur. Um, but how do I create the Take support? that next step. Right, yeah, create that check. support. Exactly. The support that's going to help build that foundation with you to help, you know, get to that next level. Absolutely. And uh, just like building a house, you know, you build the foundation first. You know what I mean? And, like, and what I mean about surrounding yourself with people who are like-minded um, why that's so important is because you're going to feed ideas off each other. You know, whatever, whatever goals you set forth for yourself, uh, whatever entrepreneurial goals you set forth, the people you network with, uh, you want them to 
have the same ideas, the same goals, and be like-minded like you. Because you're just going to bounce ideas, um, and it's just, it, you're just going to better everyone around you, you know? Um, now, the other aspect to that, right, is educating yourself. You know, you can't, <clears throat> you can't expect to just jump into something, um, you know, like, like a lot of people. They wake up one day, all right, you know what, I'm going to get into digital marketing. I see a lot of people making money of that. Good luck. <laughs> no, and, and I, it's not to steer anyone away from that particular, you know, if they want to get into that. But what have you done to educate yourself to, to understand the business, to, to um, network and perpetuate or help propel yourself to get started and go, get to that next level and scale up? You know what I mean? So... I think I think a lot of how that, to increase almost right. You know what I mean. And I think a lot of that's overlooked, and uh, and it sets people up for failure, right? And and failing is not bad. You know, you want to fail. That's how you learn. Fail forward. You've got to fail forward, though. You know, um, but just going back to that mastermind, and and having that those connections and those networks around you to to help you learn and help you build your business, that's, it's just so, I can't preach on it enough how crucial that is. And, um, so what do you got going on now? So, right now, I'm, I'm looking for potential fix and flips or rental properties, right? So, you know, I have a team that, and funny enough, like we were talking about, the people I'm working with and I have working with me and for me they don't necessarily know each other, right? So uh, a private lender who I'm pretty good friends with, um, a couple of realtors who, who you know, we've been working with, uh, some other wholesalers we've been working with, uh, a lawyer, even a lawyer I've reached out to who, who you know, is open to making sure my contracts aren't going to uh, have me end up getting sued or anything like that. You know what I mean? So that mastermind group, those, those people you want to, Keep around you to help you, you know, be successful, right? And um, and th they don't necessarily have to work with each other or for each other. They just have to have a common uh, a commonality with you, with your goals, and vice versa. You know, they're helping you. How are you helping them? And that's how you build that relationship. Exactly. So you know, providing value, you know? right, and to each other. And that's 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 all we talk about here on on the network, right? And even my role with you know educating realtors on how to build their real estate business through social media, using content creation as a means of adding value. So that way, because like in real estate, right? It's you know when when you become a vendor in those sub companies like title, mortgage. Um, credit repair, home inspections, cleaning, right? Like those are all companies within the real estate industry who at the end of the day, they need to get in front of realtors, right? right? They need it like Philadelphia Real Producers, they, they market to the top 500 realtors. And like for me, I've just been following the trend and the patterns as far as like, you know, what are these advertisers you know, looking to do and how much are they willing to pay to get in front of these realtors, but trying to teach the realtors how to leverage that, that they want to get in front of you. They want to do stuff with you anyway. So use that to your advantage, build your network strategically, build that credibility through creating content with other people in your industry to talk about these like-minded things so that way then you have something to show them besides just your ideas right. you know what i mean and you've been also doing that on tiktok tell us about tiktok uh so tiktok right um i, I just use tiktok honestly as a tool i use it as a driving force to uh network with other people in real estate um if you go back to my tic if you go to my tiktok channel you go through all my videos all my videos are are geared are excuse me are geared to uh, for one sh to show you my journey uh, as a as a new real estate entrepreneur right from beginning to current um, how you can use that to network with people who are 
uh, like-minded and want to get into the field you get it, you're, you're getting into, uh, like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to be real estate. Entrepreneurship is anything, right? It's, it's anything, having an idea uh, and, and going with that idea and, and, and believing in it, believing in it, building a business off it, trusting and it, making it profitable, right? Because in the end of the day, let's, it, you know, we, everyone is trying to, trying to make that entrepreneurship profitable. For right. sure, for sure. And that that's like kind of like um the series we just wrapped up, the six week series, visibility plus credibility right. equals profitability. Right. right? So and, and I feel like me and you, we like cause yo, this is not the first time you're on the channel, no. bro. No. Like, come on. Like I was creating content with people like you a year ago when I had maybe seven subscribers, right? Like it, like it was in December or January where I made a video saying, God bless the 34 of you, right? Yeah. Like the 34 subscribers that are out there, God bless you. And look, we had a thousand now, bro. But like I had to believe in like those times where we had valuable content, fire content, but it wasn't getting in front of people. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Tell us a little bit about like where you're at now, though, as far as like, you know, how did you transition from be, being a wholesaler to now an investor? Like, and is it because like you were able to do enough deals and put aside some money or was it because now you have the connections within the industry to be able to, you know, make deals happen more efficiently? Both. Mm. Every, everything. Like, because starting out wholesaling right and learning the real estate investment game um you know and closing the real estate uh the wholesale deals i've closed um and creating a wholesaling business which i still run me and two other partners uh we actually have a wholesaling business uh, we formed the llc we um we hired virtual assistants they're doing all of the phone calls and text messages and mail outs for us you know what I mean? So that's pretty much automated as for my wholesaling business, right? So we, you know, that's pretty much an automated business. We pay our virtual assistants. They send us leads. And, you know, as you know, right, as a realtor, sometimes those leads aren't that great. And you got to sift through, you know, possible motivated sellers and, and people who don't, who aren't motivated in selling. You got to get a F you a you couple get, times. You got to get a few FUs taking you off your list. Yeah. It's before you get that deal. You know what I mean? Be before you... Uh, it's sounding good, though. I think... That, yeah, you can... Oh, let me... Yeah, that before you, you know, get that deal and you take it to closing, right? Um, so it's all a process. So that that is the wholesaling business I'm running on the side in conjunction with now getting into the investment aspect of real So let me ask you, right? How many FUs do you tell your team to get a day? Yeah. Well... All right, so <laughs> I, I'll say uh, for every 500 F you take me off your list that our virtual assistants get, we get maybe about 10 uh, motivated leads or motivated sellers. Out of that, 10 motivated sellers, uh, maybe about two are reasonable with their, with their uh, you know, with how much they're willing to sell for, and out of that two, maybe one, we have a potential deal deal there, wholesale deal, right? So it takes a lot. It's not, you know, wholesaling is not easy, and, and finding motivated sellers, whether you're wholesaling or you're a realtor or you're an investor, it's not it's not easy, you know, and uh, it's consistency that's gonna that's gonna get you the the deals, right? Um. But that's for the, the, like I said, the wholesaling aspect. But now for the investor side of things. Um, and it's crazy because everything kind of works out without you realizing it's working out. For, for example, uh, I'm working with realtors, you know, in Philadelphia area, South Jersey area. My sister, my cousin, you, right? And how that benefits, you know, you finding me a deal, right? Let's say Justin finds me a deal, right? He finds me an on or off market deal. It doesn't really matter, but the numbers make sense. I know that I can uh, buy this property, flip it, 
you know, renovate it, put it right back on the market. Well, guess what? Justin's going to be my listing agent because he brought me that deal. Come on, talk to us. So talk not to only us. is talk he going to us. Come not on, only is he going to benefit talk to us. by finding me that deal. Talk to us. Maybe even get a finder's fee. You know what I mean? Hello. What do depends, they look like? It depends on, you know, some realtors. Depends on the deal. Realtors have different finder's fees. You know what I mean? They might charge no, 2.5 because they're going to get they're going to yep. get a finder's fee up front. And I'm going to go on in contract with him saying, listen, you got me this deal. I was able to flip it, put it back on the market. Now you get to list it. And you're the listing at you're the listing agent. So I think what you get the six percent. You don't have to split the unless there's a buyer with the buyer's agent, whatever. Forgive me, all right? Yeah, I'm it, not, could, it, it could get a little, you know, intricate, realtor, but so. that's somebody like I would pull Tom in on. So, right. you know, if anybody's wondering, yes, we are experts on the channel, um, but that's a Tom question, right? right? Shout right. out to Tom, general manager of Remax Affiliates. I got to interest. He, you know, he already because he knows Cynthia. Cynthia told him about you, so he's eager to meet you. I'm going to introduce you to him. Maybe if you could, we're doing a backyard bash on Thursday. Next Thursday, um, yeah, in the okay. evening. So okay. if you could come Thursday evening, I'll send I'll you the you information. Yeah. Um, as well as on Tuesday, we're doing a uh, picture perfect property, um, headshots, home inspections, and house cleanings. Right. Nice. Doing a little collaborative event, you know. But the the goal for us always, and now my my role as as the media director slash marketing director for the Surefire Group is to add value to agents. Right. Right. It, it's not always specifically to the agent but i'm just it's the network baby i'm using it as a tool of you know course. all these events are things that you know if you're trying to get plugged in with me you can pull up to because we are building a team me and tom had a coaching session with our partners in the business and they pull the list and they they you know they call the list right they'll call text or like i said send out send out mailers um so that and it can be anywhere you know, we can pull a list anywhere in the country, whether it's uh, vacant, pre-foreclosures, tired landlords, uh, absentee owners, whatever the case may be. It doesn't really, it really doesn't matter. We pull the list uh, detailed to what we think is going on in that particular area, right? So, um, so for lead generation, there's so many avenues you can go to pull leads. You can go to your county clerk's office and pull all the foreclosures in the county or whatever the case um you know that pretty much doing it the freeway <clears throat> or you can pay for a service like prop stream batch leads rei pro uh there's so many different services out there but you got to pay for it you know you got to pay for the skip tracing to get the phone numbers associated with the address uh and then you can pay for a virtual assistant uh, when I started out wholesaling, I did it all myself. I did the phone calls, text messages. Um, and, and, but like we were talking about earlier, time is your most valuable asset. And so we outsourced our wholesaling business to our VAs, our virtual assistants. So, but, um, so it's almost like it takes time. And I get it, right? Because now I deal a lot with like, you know, systems and stuff like right. that. But like, it's like you got to set it up. And then it, it can become a situation almost like where it's set it and forget it, right? Right. It's pretty much automated. And this goes back to the beginning of the podcast, what we were talking about when we started, the, the mastermind, right? And, and just, to, <clears throat> just to elaborate on how the example I was giving with, hey, Justin brings me a deal, I flip it, and then I use him as the listing agent. It, when you're networking like that and you're and, – and, you're doing deals with people and that that's you're essentially creating your mastermind without even realizing it because net you're creating trust with people and you're building your you're building your network you're building your network you're and all of that and and it's crazy like i was telling you like you, it just comes out of nowhere and you just realize like wait a minute i it be, and that's and that's you know even like i i just last week i talked to a group of teens um, they were in some trouble or whatever. I got invited by a good friend of mine and, you know, it was like, it was just really cool to be a part of it. But like, you know, I gave them one thing, man. And the one thing I gave them was exactly that was mindset. Like you have the ability to rewire your brain through 100%, you know what I'm saying? Through, um, uh, neuroplasticity, right? 
And what you're talking about is like becoming, you know, stronger on your personal development, developing yourself. It yes. becomes secondhand. Right. And you don't even know what's going on. It's just like boom, Listen, boom, I, boom, bang, bing, look, boom, I, bang. And I wanted to I, I, mean? I, I wanted to bring this up. And I want to... It's a good subject. Because I'm not... Listen, I'm not by, by far... You know, I, I like to read occasionally, right? You know, I, I, I like to read. Um, but there are three books that I read that changed everything. It, it, and going back to mindset, right? Uh, it, it changed... How do I put this without sounding so dramatic it, <laughs> it it just it just changed my whole view on how i view um like success and how to reach it and how to build those networks and how to uh surround yourself you want to surround yourself with the thing you're trying to be the most right so if you're trying to be if you're trying to be an athlete you want to surround yourself with athletes if you're trying to exactly. be a, if you're trying to be a doctor surround yourselves with doctors if you're trying to be a real estate agent surround yourself Around real estate, you surround about community yourself. right now. Bro. You have to, like, right? And that's that's honestly, bro, is like, you know, I believe in communities, right? Shout out to David Shans, right? If you're on my channel, you know, check out David Shans' channel, right? That's how I got started, really in con. Like, I was always in the content creation, right? Like, right. that's just what I did secondhand, no thought, and and I didn't like try to even like it was just what I did, right? But when I started watching David Shans. And I started paying for a membership. I started to understand, like, whoa, this thing is real because he got 800 people showing up every day to the morning meetup. Every morning. Wow. 8 a.m., 7.45. And, like, I'm not even in it anymore, but it's like I still show him love because, you know, now I started to build my business and have other commitments, right? You know, I ain't knocking him. Like, I I, I, I actually was just talking to my, my sis Vero. Like, I might get tapped back in. Just right. because it's a, it's one of those pools. Right. It's a pool to be able to to if you provide value there, if you show value to others, like you're you know, and that's that's what the goal should always be is to provide value so people talk about you. Right. But the other thing that we came upon and we're three episodes in now, me and you is like that the content can do the work. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you leave the trail, if you document the process, because this interview really, like, God bless the two of you, right? There's two people watching right now. There's only two people watching. God bless you. One of them's me. <laughs> like, so there's only one, and it's probably Cynthia. <laughs> so, you know, or your mom, right? Yeah, you yeah. know, God bless you, mom. Uh, you know, your sons are making you proud. <laughs> but, um, you know, real rap, though, I know our family's proud of us right now because yeah. it's it's not about the people that are watching. It's about the people that can watch if we send them the link, right. you know, and the power that that gives, right? right? So for you to be able to use this interview as, like, you know, a live webinar that you were the speaker on, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. being able to to show your value in, in, in a unique um, but relevant way. Right. But, all right, I'm done with my rant. No, you're good. <laughs> no, I just... Just elaborate a little bit more about mindset, right? Um, Give it to them, Dan. It, how does one change their mindset, right? How does how does how does a person uh, who is so used to going through the daily uh, same old ins and outs, right? And and they're and they're trying to figure out how to. Um, achieve whatever goals they're trying to achieve, right? But every single day is the same outcome, right? They're doing the same thing over same and people, over. People, same places, right? Same what, what's, things, right? What, what are, as a, what are you changing in your daily routine to make you one step closer to your goal? If you're not changing anything, I'm sorry to tell you, you're never gonna reach it. Come on, man. You're never gonna reach it because you, you, you haven't interjected. What if I'm trying to change though? Talk to those people that are trying to change, but like because I think we get so stuck. Bro. Right, we, we all so do. Stuck as people, even it's yeah, not, it's nothing personal no. towards anybody, but like it's that's life. Exactly, it's life. Right, so you know, speak to those people right now that are really maybe tapping into this channel because they're like, yo, I, I think that I I got what it takes. Right, so how do we fix that if we don't know how? You know what I'm saying? You got it. You start. You invest in yourself first. And what I mean by that is 
wholeheartedly, you have to change your mindset. And I know we could sit here all day. Well, he keeps saying change his mindset. Change his, how do you change your mindset then? What's the answer? Self-development, self-education, change, you have to get to the point where you can say to yourself, you know what? Everything that I've been doing is, is creating the same results, right? It's an, a constant and endless circle of I'm creating the same results. I'm not expanding in my business. I'm unsuccessful in my entrepreneurship. So the only thing at that point that has to change is your, yourself, your mindset, and how do you do it? Self-educate, right? You have to get yourself to the point where Aside from you uh, interacting with the thing that you're trying to be the most, and I think that's going to be the most biggest mindset change uh, out of anything. The moment you, whatever your entrepreneurial goals are, the moment you start surrounding yourself with the people who are in that same mindset, uh, that same that same goal oriented, um, you know, place in their lives, and, you know that that's where you're going to see the biggest mindset change, in my opinion. Uh, and going back to the three, the three, almost books like that I read your earlier. vibe, your vibe attracts your tribe, right? Right, absolutely, one hundred percent. Like being around those type of people that want the same things, right? One hundred percent. Like there, that is the answer to, I think ninety nine percent of the, you know, entrepreneurs out there who are still stuck in analysis paralysis. Uh, still stuck in like, and I know what uh, it's like though. It's oh, like absolutely, no pun, always, but like, bro, I'm always stuck in analysis paralysis. Yo, Even now, I about, yo, I was about to say that though, because like, I'm, I'm not like I'm always in it though. Cause always it, stuck. It. It, it's it's and always something. Pull. It's always the next move, right? Always the and next I'm, step. Always, bro, and I'm always pulling myself like out. Like, okay, take a step back. You've 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 went through this process over and over. You did the numbers. You did the math. You did the market analysis. You already, you know what I mean? You did the market analysis on this property like 10,000 times. You already know you're going to make money on it. Just pull, pull the trigger and buy it. And then boom, by that time, they already, you know, they already took another offer because I waited too long because I got stuck and, in analysis. And, and we were kind of talking about this almost because it's like, if you wait too long, you're going to miss it, right? right. Like, and that's, I think that's one thing to identify about mindset is like the one thing that I've learned is successful people, they make decisions fast and they're slow to change them. Right. But the opposite is for people who are broke, right? They take forever to make decisions right. and they change things fast. Right. You know what that I mean? That makes sense. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So talk to that right there, right? Uh. That's I, a I, mindset, I, thing, right. right? So it's yeah. Uh, you rather what's the saying? Uh, what is it? It's uh, rather, like you're gonna take forever. You right. know what I mean? Like you can't with this stuff. Yeah, I can't. I, I have a. I can't think of it. It's just it's like I'd rather ask for forgiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd rather ask, ask for, for forgiveness, forgiveness than for permission, permission. right? So yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. jumping in, making that decision, and exactly. even if you mess it up, you're on point, bro. Even you if good. you fail, you're good. You're good. Then you learn from it. You know what I mean. So, um, yeah, that's what I was trying to. I couldn't. I couldn't think of it. But it's just jumping in and, and making those split decisions. Whether you, whether you, obviously you want to be careful, right? You don't want to do a catastrophic uh, decision where it's going to be like fail. use wisdom. Of use course, use wisdom. Go with your gut feeling and just like you know, uh, win or lose, this outcome is going to benefit you regardless. You know what I mean? Like it's you're going to learn from it. No, people, people have shy growth, away from failure. having a growth mindset, right? right? 100%. So what, what would you say a growth mindset is? Because like maybe a lot of realtors are watching this, you know, especially with my role, right? I got a lot of people that are watching my content now. Right. What would you say to the realtor, right? Like, like speak to that person right now. Like somebody that's just starting their build their business, like your sister, speak to your sister right now. So like. It, it's the same across the board in real estate in terms of finding a lead, right? Getting a, finding leads and finding... It all comes down to lead gen. It all comes down to lead gen, lead gen and finding motivated sellers, right? You got to find motivated sellers. Stick to a niche. 
and this is for brand new realtors out there, investors, wholesalers, stick to a niche, stick to a, a particular area. So here, right, you guys are realtors. Well, technically, you can you can do real. You can be a realtor anywhere in, a, in PA, right? Like you can. Yeah. So in that brokerage anywhere in PA, right? And and your cousin Chrissy, right, Lexi, yeah. she was just telling me about. And she's going to be on the channel next week because I told her Thursday. So if you're watching this, Lex, because next Thursday we're doing something. Let's get it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's how I roll now, right? Yeah. It's like, let's just get it, right? But she was telling me about, like, all she has to do for Jersey is do something. Like, I even forget the terminology or whatever. But, like, so you don't have to go through the whole process. But, like, some states are like that where you could just go through that process, whatever it is. And you don't have to fully like you know take a test and everything again. So I'm I'm learning more about that. I know like I got Florida on my list, Georgia, just to learn about, right? Like right. I want to build connections. Right. I want to build networks in those cities, right? Specifically, so you got to target it down, be a little bit more specific, and you know even if it's long term, still make the steps that you can make today, right? Right, and that's you can create a mastermind anywhere. You can have multiple masterminds. Probably. You know what I mean? You can have, and and creating that mastermind essentially is just creating that relationship with people um, that are going to help you grow your business. And uh, for example, you know, like I, I've wholesaled in other states, other cities. Um, I put this page you know, I, I've called I've called realtors in that area that I was whole, you know wholesaling that particular property or land. And say, hey, look, I can really use your help. You know, we have a piece of land we're trying to wholesale. Um, I need to find a builder. You know any builders in the area? You know, you create an agreement with them. You know, they're going to benefit, right? Whatever agreement you make, maybe you give them a finder's fee, whatever the case. And bam, now they're essentially working for you without working for you. And vice versa, because now you're working for them without working Gee. for them. Because now, yo, you, now there's yo, a common, yo. now there's a commonality, right? Now you guys have a common. Bro, common, bro, listen, up? yo, I'm telling you, you're you're speaking to something, right? So I, I'm experiencing this in real life, right? Like you don't have to have a team to have a team. No. And I think people get caught up in analysis paralysis right. that I have to be this person that I'm not to have this team that I don't have. Don't. When you're building your network and your network is your team, and the more like people that were a little bit more successful and powerful started to talk about teams, the more I started to watch and see that you know they are a solo agent, so to speak, right? right? But you know they have a bunch of connections, right? And those connections make the team, the mastermind, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's it's the what makes a person successful. You don't have to be the smartest person in the room, right? Come on, somebody. You just have to be able to... Gotta get in the room, though. You have to get in the room, and you have to be able to network with people smarter than you and who's, who has done it before. If you, can, if you can master that, if you can become... Uh, if you can network that good where you can build relationships and, and partnerships with people who are smarter than you in whatever field... You created a mastermind, bro. Like because now, whatever you bring to the table, whatever they bring to the table, if it if it's a mutual benefit, it's gonna work out. Like you're gonna make out that person's gonna make out that other person. That's how you network. That's how you build relationships. That's how you scale. That's how you grow. And that's how you build a business is through building strategic relationships right. within the industry, right? right. That's, you have to, bro. We awesome. That's how you do it, bro. You know, once I once I figured that out, bro. Once I figured out that, uh, me trying to do it by myself and and you know trying to get these leads by myself, trying to call these leads, text these leads, and trying to it, time. Time is the most valuable. I don't care what anyone says. Time is the most valuable asset we have. A hundred percent. And if you can, if you can manage the time and outsource things, and and free up your time to to worry about the like the most important aspect of the business, right? Then you're just gonna see returns. You're gonna see gains. You're gonna scale, and that's that's what you know we're seeing now. 
You know what I mean? Scalability is looking likely, guys. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically, what you're saying is we're on our way to the top, man. Oh, yeah. You know, but but that's it's crazy because that's it's like you have to have a like you have to have a very clear um, you know, shout out to my guy Josh, you know, the Wolf of Broad Street. He dropped um basically the five C's of marketing and branding or whatever. And the one that he said was the most important was clarity. Mm -hmm. And it, it kind of took me to a place of like, right, that's, you know, why it's like the niching down is so important, right? People don't want to niche down and they want to be so general because they're not clear. Right. Sheesh. Right. Man, we want some stuff. But um, talk about clarity for next steps um what you're looking to do and like you know what do you have going on now like who do you want um connected to right like who do you want introductions to because you're on the network we're networking live and in person and i'm sure that people are going to probably watch this and be like yeah i gotta connect with him so listen you know what's going on what are we doing bro listen realtors hold the key in terms of real estate you have investors, you have wholesalers, you have, you know, pro property managers, so many different aspects in real estate. But, but realtors hold the key, man, to so they many do, different things. They bro. hold the key. They're, and here's, and so many people in the, so when you, realtors are engraved in the communities that they're working in. So many more people are going to trust, you know, in terms of selling their property, buying properties, they're going to trust that realtor whose who's face is all over whose name is being talked about the most. So if you're an investor or a wholesaler and you're not tapping into that that resource of of building relationships with realtors, you're you're doing it wrong. Like you're not Yo, visibility not plus credibility equals profitability and this is what I've noticed Dan is like you know a lot of times you know, realtors, because when I'm speaking to realtors, I'm speaking to myself. I'm speaking to my own insecurities, my own weaknesses. But it's because we don't really think we're that guy or that girl, right? right. But you are. Like, you are yeah. that guy. You You're are that girl. And you have to be and you have to learn how to play that part right. and believe it yourself because if not, you're going to miss your opportunity. Right. And it has to do with the confidence, Right. Absolutely. And just to go back to that initial question of, you know, um, clarity and planning. And what I mean by planning is have, set a goal. Right. And I like to do it for months. Right. For the month of May, for example, I have X, Y, Z as a goal for the month of May. That way it, it, it's not too broad out to where uh, it makes it unrealistic. If I only focus on the month of May and these are the entrepreneurial goals or fitness goals or whatever goals that I set for the month of May and I start crossing them off the list, everything becomes way more achievable. You know what I mean? So every, so you get that clarity by goal setting and setting them out two weeks, four weeks, whatever. I do them monthly, right? So right now I'm trying to reach my goals of in May, right? Trying to find that next fix and flip property or rental property or wholesale deal. You know what I mean? Not in that necessarily. So how many do you have some doors now? Uh so right now we uh we closed a couple of wholesale deals. Like it's it's been kind of tough wholesaling, I'm not gonna lie. A couple months ago. Uh or our last deal we closed. Uh um, I would like to hear your take on the market too, like where you think things are going as well. Honestly, you know, we were everyone was waiting for this big market crash. Um but it looked like it didn't it, come. It looked like it didn't come, bro. It stalled. <laughs> it looked like it stalled because there. If you go around, there are so many. And that's what I'm saying, bro. People are eating right now, so it's bro. Like, where's the Where's the huge crash? I, I don't know. It's not so here yet because. That, and that's what I'm thinking. It's like a lot of this is mindset. It's how we look at things. It's right. how we. But it's it's the media too, right? Like that's why, you know, talking about streams of revenue industries to get into nobody really talks about the media business right and like i would urge anybody to start a media business because a media business nowadays is a youtube channel absolutely right so i've already built the media business so you know the network falls under just bless media for real for real but right. you know it's like i would love this and i am i'm going to keep talking more about it because 
that's the reason why, you know, like talking about content and views and engagement, like that, like the content has to get out to make that business money. Right. So they're going to put out bad news, whatever. Right. right? It's right. getting the views. So it's just deep. It's deep, bro. So, but, um, yeah, so that's your take basically. Like it didn't come and I feel you. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, and you look around, like I said, these showings, there's still lines out these doors for showings, bro. Like, or people outbidding people still X amount of dollars over the asking price, or all these new apartment buildings, developments being built. It's all over. So I don't. If the crash is coming, I, I don't know. You know, I, I can't comment to <laughs> when. You know, I'm not. I'm and just that, going with the with the current, right? What's happening now? And it's rough, right? It's it's definitely rough, but it's. It's not horrible, right? Like, and now, like, my business took a hit because of me, though, right? Like, last year, things dried up for me. I could have blamed it on the market. The market wasn't great, but the market wasn't horrible, right? right. And I think people got to start taking accountability for themselves, right? right? So, what do you got for us now? Like, how can we connect with you, man? Like, give us your contact information because I really want people from the channel to network with us, right? So, um, listen, you get. Follow me at on TikTok at Flip and Grind, um, and uh, you know I'm I'm still getting my YouTube channel up. Uh, just Justin gonna help me with that. Listen, I just I just haven't listen, been posting I, content. That's my fault. But I've been so busy, bro. I've been so busy like looking for deals. You're eating, I've, I've been man. so busy like trying to, you know, you know, get a portfolio going and and just get at, getting after. So, but I still do post mainly on TikTok and. It's pre, it's all entrepreneurial, uh, real estate related. Um, how I got started, um, how it's going, and I'm always just giving out free chicken, man. Any 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 of my successes I put on there, any of my failures I put on there, it's because it's all learning experience. And if someone can exactly watch the videos and and get something from it and avoid making the mistakes I did or or um, copy some of the successes I made, then that's what it's all about. Because it's all you know, it comes back full circle. You know uh, what I mean? A hundred percent. Like, and that's the, that's the compound interest. For sure. Uh -oh. But, um, yeah, man, you know, it's just, it's a process and you just got to, consistency is what's, what's where it's at. Consistency. consistency is key, man. And it's that, you know, like, and then we were talking about some other stuff too, like, uh, you know, the morning routine, um, not necessarily that, but like how that plays into your diet and intermittent fasting, right? Yeah, no. Like if you're if you're working like you know a lot of mornings, like if you're if you're banging out all your calls early in the morning, right? Like, what's on your diet and how can you be more strategic and efficient? I guess right, more yeah. clear, right? Right. I mean, for me, I uh, so I intermittent fast, right? So I don't, um, and and it's and people do people do fasting for. Right. Some people do it for spiritual reasons. Some people do it for uh, health reasons or just clarity. Me, I, I know when I go a certain period of time without, you know, eating and I'll drink water or, or black coffee because you're technically not supposed to break your fast with anything. But uh, I just have better mental clarity in the morning, you know, because I do a lot of the business stuff in the morning. Yep. When I wake up to about 12, one o'clock, you get, you know, talking to uh contra uh, well for me you know i'm talking to well i have my daily job but then i also i'll get a phone call from a contractor you know or or a lead or or someone that i put an offer into or whatever the case right so i you know this is just personal everyone has their preference i'm not saying to do what i'm doing i'm just saying for in terms of how i like to not eat in the morning just because i feel as though i get a little better mental clarity to deal with a lot of the the grind in the morning you know what i mean and then come noon around this time i'll you know bust a grub you know what i mean so. Man, <laughs> yo. listen if, it's just like if they only knew the story though like you know they see the glory but if they only knew the story and ultimately then it comes down to hard work man it comes, and you start from comes, somewhere comes down to hard work and really believing in the vision like and something I want to bring up is like on one of our podcasts, right? Like maybe the second one or whatever. 
I remember like you shared with me, you were like, nah, man, you have to have the vision plain and write it down. And you pulled like a, a, a sticky note basically out of the back pocket, right? Tell us a little bit about that, talking about mindset, right? So, um, yeah, okay, yeah. Now, I, look, going back to the, I write everything down, man. I write my goals down. I really, I know it's crazy. Like, I write them down. I got this little notebook, and I'll, I'll just write, like, okay, I'm focusing on this. Like I said, I, the month of May, for example. And every every day I'll go back, and I'll read what I wrote the day before. And it's a quick one or two, you know, sentences or whatever. I wrote whatever X, Y, Z, and I'll rewrite it. So it's engraved, right, and it's fresh. And I know, like, okay, I was supposed to do this today, you know, let me let me get on it and not you know lose track of of the goals I'm setting for. So every day I'll just go back and I'll read it. Okay, boom, let me write it again or add to it, and it just keeps me in track of, hey, this was supposed to be accomplished by the end of this week. So I hold myself accountable because if you're not holding yourself accountable, there it is. Bro, listen, he does Josh, the same thing. Josh put me onto this, bro. Yep. Using both sides of the book, right? So this is like my to-do list, my scrap notes, right? Yep. But it, it, you know, you just gotta write it. Though. You just gotta write it. Down. You just gotta, you know what I mean? Like it if you don't got, yeah, you know I mean, if you don't got one of these, bro, you ain't out here, bro. Like, come on, man. I'm telling you, bro. I'm come telling on, you, man. Every, you talking? It, you're talk, man. It's, and it's crazy. The simplest, the simplest things too. Like just doing, just writing down your goals for that week, and then revisiting it every day. How much you accomplish, bro. It's just like, it really does keep you in check and it keeps you accountable. It's self-accountability. That's all it is. You know, because we can set goals. Like, for example, someone, someone once told me, and it, and it kind of, it really was like, damn, you can set goals for yourself all you want. You know, but like, if you're not, if you don't have accountability of those goals and you're not checking you up on them, it, they're just dreams at that point. You know what I mean? So you have to have accountability and then when you see how successful people build their business, right? It's like they have they have somebody for everything, right? right? Like what does that mean? Like you start to develop like like this is what I was telling my virtual assistants. I was like, "Yo, y'all are good because y'all embedded your personal business as an independent contractor into my business." Right. Like I don't have this salary position without y'all, right? So how can we start to teach people that? Because it's like, you know, that's the value add though, right? Because even me now with um, the company I work for, the Surefire Group, it's like, you know, I'm making myself like, you know, um, very, very sticky within their organization, right? So it's like, how do you coincide? How do you coexist within your brokerage within relationships with these investors, right. you know, different networking groups. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, jeez, man. Yeah, we on some stuff today, hey, bro. Look, man, we, we talking that talk. Listen, man, it, and ultimately this is just trying to get the information out there and help other people. Because exactly. at one point. Because you're and, not alone. You're, you're not, not alone. Because at one point, I was, we were talking before we came on. I was like, where were you a year or two ago? You, jeez. You know what I mean? Because, you, you know. And this is just another level, another step, right? You get to that next level, and then and then you get to that next level and next level. But in between those levels, you're failing, and you're succeeding, you're failing, succeeding, and boom. Then you're scaling to that next level. That's what it's all about. You know what I mean? So at least that's how I interpret it. You know what I mean? Nah, bro. Listen, you, you, you speak into exactly where I'm at right now because it's like, you know, even something as simple as, um, you know, I bought a keyboard, right? Because, you know, now, like, my creativity, right? Like, you know, and I remember, like, years ago, Pastor Joseph told me this. And he's, like, real rap, bro. It's like, and, like, I had to grow up out of that emotional place of, like, allowing, you know, my feelings to get the best of me because I'm just always, like, upset about something, Right. And like, um, but I remember him saying like, um, you know, uh, about like, um, have like being on fire, right? Like, cause it's when, you know, a whole different subject, but I was like young, I was on fire for God. Right. I was like, really like, you know, and, and he was like saying how, you know, sometimes a forest fire 
isn't always good. It's deadly. And I was like, whoa, at a young age, right? Like, you know, forest fires aren't always good. They're deadly, right? And, and basically saying, like, you know, the best type of fire is contained. And not really understanding what that meant, but, you know, now in retrospect, looking back and, and thinking that, like, you know, doing, doing, doing without a strategy isn't always the best idea, Right. right? It's about having a plan, right. a call to action, accountability it all starts to be with able to follow through with that, right? Jeez. All starts with a plan. You have to have a plan. Whether you have the plan figured out, right? You just you just have to jot down. So because the then it's step by step then once you step have the step. plan. Then it's <laughs> step by step. So let's say, for example, my plan was to flip X amount of properties this in 2023. Boom, that's, that's, the, that's the plan. All right? It's broad, pretty broad, because how many properties, right? How many are you trying to flip? When are you trying to flip them? When are, you know what I mean? So, but then you, if you break that down. It's almost like an agent. How many deals do you want to close, right? right? Like, right. How many do you want to close 10 deals, 20 deals, 30 deals, or do you want to make $250,000 in commission, right. $100,000 in commission? Right. But if you right. break that down monthly... Yep. Right. If I want to, if I want to flip ten homes this year, and I break that down monthly, that means that's one home a month, right? And if I break down, uh, break that down even more, what am I doing weekly to securing those finding deals. those properties? You know what I mean? And then that breaks it down. What am I doing daily to make sure I'm meeting my weekly goals? That's it, bro. That's yep. that literally is it. And if you can, if you can do that, and you can, um, you know, um. Uh, I said it earlier. Sorry, I'm sorry. Um, accountability, right? If you have daily, weekly, and monthly accountability of these goals, you're going to start reaching. Another big thing someone uh, famous told me, or at least I think he's famous, is always dream bigger. Like, for some reason, and this works out a lot for some people, let's say I was going to do 100 homes. That's, that's that's a lot, bro. That's that's a lot for even like, you know, investors who've been doing it for a while. But if you have that goal and you only hit 10 to 15, right? You're still the propensity of like you doing 10 to 15 deals. If you would have set that up only 10 to 15 deals for the year, right? You might have only gotten five, right? And you shouldn't be disappointed about that. But if you set the bar just a little bit higher, you know what I mean? It's gonna push you. It's gonna it's gonna make you create a plan. You know that that downwards trickle down plan planning. Like I said, you go from monthly down to daily or whatever. And sh sure enough, man, you might end up actually getting more deals than you would have if you would have just set it to twelve deals a year or a certain X amount of dollars you wanted to make a year. You know what I mean? So bro, you talking that talk right now, so, but bro? But that's what I'm saying, like. Just set the bar higher. And who cares if you don't meet it? You know what I mean? It's, it's not about... It's just setting the bar higher and making that plan, keeping yourself accountable daily, weekly, monthly, however you want to do it. And if at the end of it, you didn't meet your goals, you grew. You grew as a person. You grew as in whatever entrepreneurship you're into, real estate, whatever the case, you grew in that field. And you're, it's the, the value in that is still there. You know what I mean? So I just want to say this, though, bro, is like, I feel like for you, and this is just, you know, me understanding the market, understanding the need, and understanding the value is that um, I know you're talking about the mastermind, but like, really, we should, because this is the thing, bro, is like, that's coaching. Like, you know, and what you're talking about is coaching, and people, they don't have accountability because they don't ever take that step, right? And that's why I was telling this individual, right, that, you know, she had a coaching call with me and the general manager of Remax, but I said that, like, yo, you wouldn't have came to this call unless it was for a reason and you right. wanted something specific. So now it's like being able to, like, so now for me, right, it's like, 
I have somebody I could close a deal with now because right. you want it. I'll give you the lead, right? Just do the work, right? right? So, damn, bro. Listen. Sheesh. Three books. I'm going to name three books. Drop them on us, bro. If you, and I, and I, I so wholeheartedly believe this because after I finished these three books, and like I said earlier, everything changed. What are everything. the books, bro? Come everything. On, tell us, bro. First book, um, well, you want to read them in order, right? Hold on one sec. I'm getting blown up here. Yeah, me too. Okay. Okay. First book, I suggest. Just three. And this is for, it doesn't matter if you want to get into real estate. It doesn't matter if you want to get into media, whatever type of entrepreneurship you want to get into. These three books in order, I highly suggest. I promise you, if you finish these three books, everything changes. Your whole life changes. First book is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza, right? The second book, and a lot of you entrepreneurs out there who have read this already know, Think and Grow Rich, uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And the third book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I'm telling you right now, if you take the time and you finish these three books, everything changes, especially in your entrepreneurial goals. Everything changes. Um, and, uh, it, and it's crazy because you, you start to realize that, especially in wealth building, right? Because what did we talk about earlier? Everyone's always trying, everyone's trying to achieve that level of wealth or that level of security and prosperity where, you know, they, they, you made it, right? Whether All right, so we have Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. By Jock, Dr. Joe Suspenza, yeah, right? What was the next one? Uh, Think and Grow Rich. Oh, yeah. So we, we played that on the channel before, but we'll bring that up. This is... By Napoleon Hill. Yep. And Secession, right? You want to read Breaking the Habit first. And then you want to jump into Think and Grow Rich, and, and then you want to jump into Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You read those in succession, I'm telling you right now, it, uh, game changer. And I'm not promoting, I'm not making, I'm not promoting books or anything, I'm not making money or whatever, you know what I mean? It's just these three books that really help change the way I view on how um, to be successful. So, so these are the keys in your tips to success, so, basically, right? 100%. So we in got, my opinion, 100%. So Anyone have, trying to get into anything entrepreneurial-wise, you read these three books, everything changes. Now, this is good. We got Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself, How to Lose Your Mind and Create a New One, Dr. Joe Dispenza. You had the, it was the other book, but. Oh, it was? Yeah, it was this one. Oh, airdrop that to me real quick. So, um, the MacBook. Um, these three. And then Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and then. That, that uh, is a staple. Yeah, and then Think and Grow Rich. No, I feel you, right? I feel you. But, um, yeah. But, yeah. No, it's just going to it's just gonna change your whole thought process. And, and first off, what money actually is, right? And I'm not going to go. This is a whole other podcast. I'm not going to go into this. I know. <laughs> whole other podcast. But what money really is, how the wealth become wealthy, how a normal person becomes wealthy, um, and all mindset. Those three things, right? So... I'll let you. I'll let the viewers decide for themselves if they choose to read them, and and you know what happens after they read them. But I can tell you from personally reading these three books, everything changed. Everything. So I'm gonna tell you this, bro. I I haven't read. I love Joe Dispenza, so I'm gonna read it because yeah. I haven't read that. Okay. But Joe Dispenza, that's my guy. Yep. I I tap into his channel i tap into his teachings you know what he teaches about the mind about rewiring your brain about meditation all in that book you know being able to and like that's why i said for me the keyboard is so instrumental because you're actually tapping into those parts of your brain with the keyboard right because it's really like even the fact that like through an app like I like I'll see your mom on on Sunday right and then she, I'm gonna have like my first lesson with her but that little tune I showed you like that's all self taught like I've been teaching myself and it's amazing when you can really begin to learn it and it starts to click and you're right. like yo you know so 
I'm I'm really I'm really excited like about you know what's going on in our lives, bro. Because like these podcasts right now, they haven't really been for the money or for you know the people. It's been more like to document our process and just to take advantage of the opportunity that we have to be able to create content so efficiently, right? So you know we're not gonna stop doing this, y'all. Like, and this ain't for anybody else. This is for us. You know what I mean? But we're going to start doing it for y'all, too. That's what we're saying. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? But listen, give us some closing words, Dan. We've been on here for a minute. Just no, yeah. value pack gems, bro. But, you know, close us out and, you know, tell the people what's next. Um, it all starts with uh, a want, right? So, what do you want in life? You know what I mean? We all want something better than our current position, Everyone does. Like you can, you can't lie to you can lie to yourself all you want. Everyone wants to be well better off than what they are currently. How are you going to get there? What's that one idea or one goal that's going to get you uh, to that prosperous uh, life or reality you're trying to get to? Right. Uh, and then, um, self education. Those three, those three books, man, are gold. I promise. There's no one that would read those three books that's going to be the same after they read them in terms of what they want to do entrepreneurially and how they're going to tackle, you know, this game we call life and, you know, the, the whole wealth building game that we're all trying to achieve, right? Uh, and just have a plan. Keep yourself accountable. And sure enough, things start happening out of nowhere. It's crazy. It's crazy. And surround yourself with the thing you're trying to be the most. You have to surround yourself network, with the thing yo. you're trying to be the most. Like, no one in your life currently, and it's like I said, it's all my opinion, no one in your life currently who are not uh, in that same thought process, right? So everyone in your life, friends, family, who are not supporting or feeding into that, that uh, plan that you have, that goal, uh, you're never... Not saying they're going to hold you back, right? Because we love friends and family, people that have been with us for our whole lives. But if they're not actively on that same if they're level. Not tapped in, if they're, they're not tapped in. They're not tapped. Right. So you, so you have to go find people who are in that field, in that, in that real estate game, in that uh, social media game, in that whatever you're trying to get into and whatever you're trying to be successful at, surround yourself, become friends with, build networks in that particular area. And everything will start to. And, the, and this is the other thing, right? Is like. You know, um, hey, we're shooting a podcast in here. <laughs> uh, that that's her sister. She's allowed to uh, interrupt because this is this is something groundbreaking for our family, bro. And I'm not even gonna get into it, bro. We're gonna close out just because this has been fire. And like, you know, your network is your net worth. Network man. is your net worth. One hundred percent. Listen, and it's crazy. You start networking with some people. And, and you start... Bro, it's over. almost like networking is a drug, bro. Like, yeah. I'm hooked. I'm hooked, bro. Man, that, that's... I'm on one, man. Listen, let's get it. Let's we get networking, it. baby. We live and in action networking, baby. <laughs> Listen, man. Get with us, man. Oh, that's not working. So... All right. Well, listen, y'all. Subscribe. Get it. You know, tap in with us. You know what it is. We just hit a thousand subscribers and we can't do this without y'all but this episode was sponsored by remax affiliates if you are looking to grow your real estate business and partner with with title and mortgage and actually make some money in your real estate business if you are a top producer then you know you got it you got to mess with us right if you're looking to just get started and you're figuring you know what is the right brokerage then don't go to the wrong brokerage. Come over here. We got you. So, but flip and grind, man. We did it again. We Let's did it. it again, my <laughs> brother. We did it again, man. So, man, listen, you already know you'll see a part three. I mean, a part four for sure. Oh, but um, this one is officially, this is on the network season two. Man, this is um uh, this is amazing. This was an awesome time. Um, documenting your process, you know. As you're building your network is going to help you 
get in the doors and have that credibility to grow your 100%. business, right? So 100%. Listen, man, your network is your net worth. We out of here, y'all. Peace.